العلم أشراف مطلب وطالبه لله أكرام من يمشي على قادم العلم نور مبين يستضيء به أهل السعادات والجهال في الظلم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا وسيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما اللهم آمين um, To proceed Today's lecture بإذن الله تعالى is about the khawarij the description, the foundations, and the history. So, we will be discussing first and foremost, the first point that we will discuss is a definition of al-khawarij. What does al-khawarij or this term indicate to? What does it mean? And then we will move on to the description of the khawarij. Um, and basically the description of the Khawarij in the past and the description of today's Khawarij. And then we will also discuss a brief history of Nash'atul Khawarij or how they actually appeared in this Ummah. <clears throat> so the word Al-Khawarij is the plural term for Khariji. And the essence of this word comes from Kharaja Yakhruju. Someone who basically rebels or is defiant against authority. So <clears throat> a khariji is one who revolts, one who rebels, one who is against any form of authority. And the plural of this term is al-khawarij. <clears throat> so the khawarij, legislatively speaking, are those people who rebelled against the imam or the ruler in any era. And Al-Imam Al-Shahrastani in Al-Milal wa nihal <clears throat> he says that the khawarij, um, the ta'rif or the definition of the khawarij, he says is, كُلُّ مَنْ خَرَجَ عَلَى الْإِمَامِ الْحَقِّ الَّذِي اتَّفَقَتِ الْجَمَاعَةُ عَلَيْهِ يُسَمَّى خَارِجِيًا كُلُّ مَنْ خَرَجَ عَلَى الْإِمَامِ الْحَقِّ so everyone or anyone who rebels against the Imam Al-Haq or the Imam who has been appointed in truth or the legitimate Imam, this person is known as a Khariji. And Ibn Hazm, I'm going to mention Ibn Hazm's ta'rif of the Khawarij because you all know and you've all heard those people who have mentioned what Ibn Hazm says regarding uh, rebelling against uh, Al-Imam <coughs> Al-Jair or the oppressive Imam um, and his stance on this. In another place, Ibn Hazm actually contradicts that particular stance <coughs> and he says, uh, he says, وَمَنْ وَافَقَ الْخَوَارِجْ مِنْ إِنْكَارِ التَّحْكِيمِ وَتَكْفِيرِ أَصْحَابِ الْكَبَائِرِ Whoever agrees with the Khawarij in the uh, in the disbelief of a tahkim and we will late mention what tahkim means later on inshallah and the takfir of the sinners or ashab al kabai those who come with major sins and he says and in the qawl or in their opinion bil khuruji ala a'immatil jawr in their opinion with regards to rebelling against Aimmatil Jawr or oppressive tyrants, oppressive rulers. And then he says at the end for who khariji, then this person is a khariji. This person is a rebeller. So even Ibn Hazm in another place, you can see he actually claim he says that a khariji is anyone who rebels against the tyrant Imam or the tyrant ruler. And he mentions this in his book Al Fisal. So the Khawarij, basically, this is a pre brief definition of who the Khawarij are. And our Salaf, yani the Sahab Ridwanullah Ta'ala Alayhim and the Tabi'un and the Atba'u Tabi'in, they knew him with, they knew them with specific names and they uh, 
address them with specific uh, titles. The first being Al Haruriya. So they known they, they were known in the books of the Salaf as Al Haruriya. Okay, and the reason why they were known as Haruriya is because after the Battle of Sifil, they uh, they all camped in a t- particular town um, or in a particular village called Harura, hence why they were known as Haruriya. And in the hadith of Aisha in Bukhari and Muslim, uh, Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, she said to a woman who asked about the ha'id, ma balu al-ha'id taqdi al-sawm wa taqdi salah when she asked this question, Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, she said to her, Ahruriyatun anti, are you a haruriya? Yani, are you a kharijiya? Because that was what the madhab of the khawarij was at, at the time. So they were known as al haruriya because of the fact that they because of the fact that they were part of the army of Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu, and then they rebelled against Ali by uh, camping in a particular place called Harura, so they were known as Haruriya. Also, they're known as Ashurat. So the, the name, the second name that they are known as in the time of the Salaf is Ashurat. And Ashurat, because they say they used to say Sharaina and Fusana fi Ta'atillah. They said, or they used to say, we have bought our souls and we have sacrificed our souls. Um, and dedicated our life for the worship of Allah. يعني بعناها بالجنة. يعني we have sold our souls for Jannah. So that's why they were known as Al-Shurat. Alhamdulillah. And they were also known as Al-Muhakkima. Al-Muhakkima. Because as you heard in last week's um, lecture, um, you heard that one of the shubahat and one of the misconceptions and some, one of the misconceptions that they mentioned to, to uh, uh, Ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhu was they said, they used to say, in الْحُكْمُ إِلَّا لِلَّهِ Indeed, the hukum belongs to Allah. And they said that Ali has fallen into kufr because of the fact that he allowed arbitrators. And those two arbitrators, as you know, are Abu Musa al-Ash'ari and Amr ibn al-As. So they were known as al-muhakkima, yani those who made takfir through because of the issue of arbitration. The fourth name that they were known as is al-mariqa, from the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Yamruqoon min al-dini kama yamruq al-sahm min al-ramiya. Yani yamruqoon min al-dini, they will leave this religion, similar to how an arrow enters and then leaves. Um, from the other side, يعني, its prey, or يعني, the, the, its target. So these are basically some names that, are, that the, our Salaf, Ridwanullah Ta'ala alayhim, knew them as. As for the appearance of the Khawarij, you all know that before the year 37, after the Hijrah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, there, there was no innovation amongst the Ummah the, during the Khilafah of Abu Bakr Ridwan, ta'ala anhu, there was no bid'ah, there was no innovation no ta'ifa or no sect appeared in the time of Umar Kadhalik and then in the time of Uthman ta'ala anhu, um, yani this was when the fitna of the Khawarij actually appeared. In the time of Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu, this was when the fitna of the Khawarij appeared and this was when they were the act- responsible for killing and murdering Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu. They entered his house while he was reciting the Quran and they murdered him and they assassinated him. And after they assassinated him, one of them, yani the face of Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu fell on the Mus'haf and one of them he kicked the face of Uthman or the head of Uthman with his feet and he said, I have not seen a more beautiful kafir today. So this was when the, the fitna of the Khawarij actually began. And as a result of this, many of, the ones, many of those who killed and assassinated or took part in the assassination of Uthman, ta'ala anhu, they entered into the camp of Ali ibn Abi Talib. Hence why Muawiyah radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he actually didn't want the Khilafah, he didn't want rulership, but all he wanted was to avenge the death 
of Uthman or the killing of Uthman. And this was where the disagreement between him and Ali occurred. And this was a fitna in the time of the Sahaba, Ridwanullah ta'ala alayhim. Al-Mushtahidu al-Musibu minhum lahu ajran, wal mukhti'u minhum lahu ajrun wahid. The one who was correct has two rewards, and the one who was incorrect has one reward. And al-Haq al-Mahd, as Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah radiyallahu rahimahullah ta'ala says, kana ma'a al-ladhina in azalu al-fitnati tamaman. The al-Haq al-Mahd, the true, the, 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 the Haq, and those who were upon the pure truth are those who didn't even enter into the fitna between Ali and Muawiyah radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And they were the majority of the Sahaba, they were the majority of the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So then the Khawarij um, appeared and this was, this appearance is known as, and this is the, their appearance in number, their appearance within the sphere of politics at the time. But however, they, the, the fikr and the actual uh, thought or the actual um, the concept of rebellion occurred in the time of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this is mentioned in a hadith, the hadith of Abu Sa'id al-Khudri in Bukhari, where he says, Abu Sa'id, he says, بَعَثَ عَلِي بْنَ أَبِي طَالِبْ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَىٰ عَنْهُ إِلَىٰ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ مِنَ الْيَمَنِ بِذُهَيْبَةٍ فِي أَدِيمٍ مَقْرُوضٍ he said that Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he sent to the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from Yemen, he sent to him a piece of gold, lam tuhassal min turabiha, a piece of gold not yet taken out of its ore, and it was in a tanned leather container. Qala, he said, faqasamaha bayna arba'ati nafar. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he divided and distributed this gold between four people, between Uyayna ibn Badr, between Uyayna uh, ibn Badr, and Waqra' ibn Habis, two, and Wazayd al-Khayl, three, and the fourth was Alqama. Um, and the fourth one, he said, either Alqama or Amir ibn Tufayl, he wasn't sure which one. فَقَالَ رَجُلٌ مِّنْ أَصْحَابِهِ And a man then, after witnessing this, a man from the, his companions, he said, كُنَّا نَحْنُ أَحَقُّ بِهَذَا مِنْ هَا Speaking to the Prophet sallallahu he said, we are more worthy of this gold than these people that you've given it to. فَبَلَغَ ذَلِكَ النَّبِيَّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وسلم. So this reached the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. فَقَالَ then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, أَلَا تَأْمَنُونِي وَأَنَا أَمِينُ مَنْ فِي السَّمَاءِ Do you not trust me when I am أَمِينُ مَنْ فِي السَّمَاءِ When I am the one who is trusted by the one in the heavens, يعني Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is proof that Allah is above his throne because فِي هُنَا بِمَعْنَى عَلَى أي وَأَنَا أَمِينُ مَنْ عَلَى السَّمَاءِ He says, يَأْتِينِ خَبَرُ السَّمَاءِ صَبَاحًا وَمَسَاءً Revelation comes to me by, by night and by day. Yani, how can you not trust me with the affairs of this dunya when Allah trusts me with the affairs of the akhirah? Qala, then he said, فَقَامَ رَجُلٌ A man stood up. Yani, after this, a man stood up and he said, غَائِرُ الْعَيْنَيْنِ yani, With sunken eyes. Yani, his eyes were as though they were deep into their sockets. And then he says, مُشْرِفَ الْوَجْنَتَيْنِ نَاشِرَ الْجَبْحَ يعني, and with high cheekbones and a high forehead. كَثَّ اللِّحْيَةً With a thick beard. مَحْلُوقَ الرأس With a shaved head. And he was wearing an izar. فَقَالَ He said, يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ He said to the Prophet, يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ O oh, Messenger of Allah, اِتَّقِ الله, Fear Allah. This, was, this is how he is speaking to the Prophet قَالَ Then the Messenger of Allah said, وَيْحَكْ يعني woe be to you أو أم ويلك أو لست أحق أهل الأرض أن يتقي الله Am I not the most entitled on the face of Allah to fear on the face of the earth to fear Allah Am I not the one who is most entitled to this قال then he said ثم ولا الرجل and then the man he walked away he turned away وقال and then, so, the, so the man basically, after speaking this, he turned away. And وَقَالَ خَالِدْ بْنَ الْوَلِيدِ Khalid ibn al-Walid, he said, يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ O Messenger of Allah, 
Allah ad ribu unuka. Should I not strike his neck? Yani should I not kill him? Qala the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said, لا no. لا الله أن يكون يصلي. Maybe he is one who prays, and this is proof that the salah is wajib. Yani prayer, a person who does not pray is considered to be a kafir and a disbeliever. Because the Prophet sallam, he mentioned this as a illa for not killing him. Which means that if, he, if, if a person does not pray, then he is not considered to be a Muslim, he is a kafir. فقال خالد, and then Khalid said, وَكَمْ مِنْ مُصَلِّنْ يَقُولُ بِلِسَانِهِ مَا لَيْسَ فِي قَلْبِهِ um, And how many people are there? who pray that say with their tongues that which is in their heart, that which is not in their hearts qala rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam then the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said inni lam umar an unaqqiba quluba an-nas wa la ashqqa butunahum i have not been commanded to delve into people's hearts and to basically check into the interiors of people and what's inside them qala then he said thumma nadara ilayhi and then the Prophet Sallallahu the Prophet looked at him while he was walking away. فَقَالَ Then he said, وَهَذَا مَحَلُّ الشَّاهِدِ He said, إِنَّهُ يَخْرُجُ مِنْ ضِئْضِئِ هَذَا قَوْمٌ يَتْلُونَ كِتَابَ اللَّهِ Indeed, they will appear from the progeny, from the... ضِئْضِئِ here means عَلَى شَاكِلَةِ مَنْ عَلَى شَاكِلَةِ It doesn't mean his offspring. It means يعني مَنْ كَانَ عَلَى شَاكِلَتِهِ One who is similar to him. The concept or what he has come with, they will appear someone or people that are similar to him. Qawmun, a people whom yatluna kitab Allah, they recite the book of Allah. Ratban, yani they recite it in a beautiful way, in an eloquent way. Wala yujawizu hanajirahum, but it will not exceed their throats. Yani it will not enter their hearts. It will just be something that they recite with their tongues without the words of Allah actually affecting their hearts. يَمْرُقُونَ مِنَ الدِّينِ كَمَا يَمْرُقُ السَّهْمُ مِنَ الرَّمِيَّةِ يَمْرُقُونَ مِنَ الدِّينِ They will leave this religion كَمَا يَمْرُقُ السَّهْمُ مِنَ الرَّمِيَّةِ Similar to how an arrow leaves its target. يعني when an arrow hits a target, it quickly leaves from the other side. If it's a very sharp arrow. And then the Prophet Wasallam he said, <coughs> لَإِنْ أَدْرَكْتُهُمْ لَأَقْتُلَنَّهُمْ قَتْلَ ثَمُودِ If I ever see these people, I will kill them and I will لَأَقْتُلَنَّهُمْ I will massacre them the way Thamud were all destroyed. So here you can clearly see that the, this man who spoke to the Prophet ﷺ in, a, in such a rude manner, in an offensive manner, um, that the Prophet ﷺ was describing here a people who will be ala, who will come with the same idea with the same concept because this man who kharaja bi lisanihi he said to the prophet ittaqillah fear allah and then he left he walked away and um, the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam yani he 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 rebuked him fil hal he told him off he chastised him and he said to him yani wayhak يعني من ومن يتقى يعني أنا أحق أهل الأرض أن 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 يتقى الله I am the most worthy of from the people of the earth to to fear Allah and from the فوائد or from the benefits also of this hadith is the statement of the of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم where he said إني لم أؤمر أن أنقب قلوب الناس here the the, the scholars رحمهم الله تعالى they use this as a proof for the principle أن أن نحن نحكم نحن نحكم بالظاهر والله يتولى السرائر. We only judge upon what we can see and what we can observe. And as for the السرائر, as for things that are unseen to us in the hearts and what people think and what they believe in, then this is between Allah and them. نحن لا so we cannot say you you said this because this is what you believed in unless the person says yes this is what I believe in. In another narration. Um, also, Afwan, also from the fawaid or the from the benefits of this hadith, is the statement of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, "Yatluna kitab Allah." So here, the Prophet is saying they yatluna kitab Allah, and they will be reciting the book of Allah. So clearly, they are a people who know the book of Allah. They have knowledge of the recitation of the book of Allah. Allah subhanahu wa taala, He says, regarding a people similar to this, He says, "Wa minhum ummiyuna." 
لا يعلمون الكتاب إلا أمانية ومنهم listen closely to this verse ومنهم أميون and from them are أميون يعني أميون من هم الأمي الأمي هو الذي لا يكتب ولا يقرأ the one who doesn't read one who doesn't um, who doesn't write he is called legislatively speaking he is called an أمي so ومنهم أميون and from them are أميون يعني those who are illiterate those who cannot neither read nor write لا يعلمون الكتابة they do not know from the book إلا except أماني أماني أي قراءة except its recitation the verse here يعني there's a perceived contradiction here if they are an أميون if they're illiterate then how is Allah why is Allah describing them as a people who can actually recite إلا أماني أي إلا قراءة Shaykh Ibn Uthaymeen, rahimahullah ta'ala, he says, this verse is referring to the, any qari, anyone who is known as a qari, or who recites the Qur'an, but doesn't know the tafsir or the meanings of what he or she is reciting. This is person is still considered an ummi. So even if that person is a hafiz, huwa ala khair, la shak he's upon khair, but if he's a hafiz or he's reading something and he doesn't know what he's reading or what she's reading and they, have, they don't know the tafsir of what they're reading, then this means they are still considered as ummiyun. And this is subhanAllah something that we all need to ponder over and reflect over. We see people um, 